Shalom, good evening. This is T7 Israel News, broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel emphasizes to the United States its determination to achieve Jerusalem's war objectives, including the eradication of Hamas in Rafah. Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi accuses Israel of evading a ceasefire arrangement with Hamas as the IDF expands its operational activity in the eastern section of the Rafah sector. Israeli Foreign Minister Israel Katz tells South Africa's leadership following yet another ICJ hearing that repeating a lie a thousand times won't turn it into truth. Israel emphasized to the United States its determination to continue operating until the goals of the war are achieved in the Gaza Strip, including the return of hostages and the destruction of Hamas. Moreover, in a lengthy phone conversation, Israeli Defense Minister Yav Gallant briefed U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin on operational developments in the southern Gaza and Rafah sector, where IDF forces are fighting to dismantle the remaining four Hamas battalions, including the elimination of hundreds of terrorists, the destruction of several terror tunnels, as well as efforts to locate hostages. Austin and Gallant also discussed the humanitarian efforts that complement operational actions and objectives, including the evacuation of civilians from the Rafah area, the entry of hundreds of trucks via Israel's crossings and the Ashdod port, as well as ongoing cooperation with the international community to facilitate the provision of civilian services. And while the chief focus of their discussion focused on the Gaza Strip, Minister Gallant also raised issues related to bilateral security cooperation between Israel and the United States, including the importance of force buildup efforts, which are vital to contend with growing threats from common enemies. It is important to know that the phone conversation with Defense Secretary Austin took place after Minister Gallant toured the Rafah sector in person, where he received a comprehensive situation assessment. והפעולה הזאת תימשך באמצעות כוחות נוספים שייכנסו אל המרחב. מנהרות כבר הושמדו על ידי הכוחות שלנו, מנהרות נוספות יושמדו בקרוב, הפעולה הזאת תלך ותתעצם, והחמאס הוא לא ארגון שיכול להתחדש כעת. אין לו עתודות, אין לו יכולת לייצר אמצעי לחימה, אין לו אספקה, אין לו חימוש, אין לו יכולת לטפל כמו שצריך במחבלים שנפגעים. Following Minister Gallant's visit to Rafah, Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu also took an aerial tour over the Gaza Strip, during the course of which he received an aerial briefing on activity in the Palestinian enclave from the 162nd Division Commander, while focusing in-depth on the operations of the division in the Rafah sector. Subsequently, Premier Netanyahu, accompanied by Deputy Chief of General Staff Major General Amir Baram, visited the 55th Artillery Battalion at the Bnei Netzarim base, where he was briefed on the activity of the battalion since the start of the war and recent efforts related to the Rafah sector. <laughs> למילוט ולהספקה. והקרב הזה שאתם חלק אינטגרלי ממנו הוא קרב שמכריע הרבה דברים במערכה הזאת. אז אני חוזר ואומר, אנחנו בקרב פיטי עכשיו. פעולה שלכם מסייעת לסיים אותו. הסיום שלו מקדם אותנו מרחק עצום להכרעת האויב. ואני רוצה פשוט לברך אתכם ולהודות לכם. While Israel continues to focus on eradicating the Islamist Hamas throughout the Gaza Strip, the Arab League held a leader summit in the Kingdom of Bahrain, during the course of which Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi utilized the top-level regional fora to accuse Israel of evading efforts to hammer out a tangible ceasefire, despite the fact that the Islamist Hamas was the one which refused to accommodate Israel's explicitly stated red lines. We have Israel is still in the responsibility of its 
والمراوغة حول الجهود المبذولة لوقف إطلاق النار بل والمضي قدما في عملياتها العسكرية المرفوضة في رفح فضلا عن محاولات استخدام معبر رفح من جانبه الفلسطيني لإحكام الحصار على القطاع Also addressing the Arab leaders in attendance, including Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, Qatari Emir Sheikh Tamim ibn Hamad al-Thani, and Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman al-Saud, Jordan's King Abdullah II seized the opportunity to raise a growing challenge to his Hashemite kingdom by Iranian-backed elements, smuggling drugs and armaments from Lebanon and Syria into the Arabian Gulf. <laughs> والجماعات المسلحة الخارجة عن القانون وسيادة الدولة وأعمال هذه العصابات الإجرامية وخصوصا تهريب المخدرات والأسلحة الذي يتصدى له الأردن بحزم منذ سنوات لحماية شبابنا من هذا الخطر الخارجي Iran's destabilizing activities throughout the region took a backseat to the Palestinian plight in the Arab League summit. To further amplify an Arab front, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres was granted the opportunity to voice the world body's position vis-à-vis -vis the raging war in the Gaza Strip. We gather as hearts are breaking for Palestinians in Gaza. The war in Gaza is an open wound that threatens to infect the entire region. In its speed and scale, it is the deadliest conflict in my time as Secretary General for civilians, aid workers, journalists, and our own UN colleagues. Turning to the world body's International Court of Justice in The Hague, where the Republic of South Africa has asked the court to order Israel to hold its offensive in Rafah, accusing Israel, irrespective of basic facts, of committing genocide in the Gaza Strip. When we last appeared before this court to hold this genocidal process to preserve Palestine and its people, instead, Israel's genocide has continued apace and has just reached a new and horrific stage. Israel has sought to hide its crimes through the weaponization of international humanitarian law. It pretends that the civilians it ruthlessly kills through its 2,000 pound bombs, through its targeted airstrikes, through its artificial intelligence systems, through its executions are human shields. This whitewashing of Israel's genocide misses the key and fundamental element that of the massive and still mounting evidence of Israel's genocidal intent. Alongside the baseless allegations and blatant lies spouted by the South African delegation, Pretoria's legal representative, knowing full well that his overcompensated case lacked any merit or evidence, stooped so low as to claim that Israel was essentially covering up the evidence of alleged crimes absent any proof. The key point today is that Israel's declared aim of wiping Gaza from the map is about to be realized. Further, evidence of appalling crimes and atrocities is literally being destroyed and bulldozed. In effect, wiping the slate clean for those who've committed these crimes and making a mockery of justice. In response to the preposterous allegations and baseless deceit spouted by the South African team, the Israeli team sought to disregard the evident emotional case of slander, sticking to legal merit based on solid grounds. This case, even by its very name, the application of the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide in the Gaza Strip, suggests an inversion of reality. It has given rise to South Africa's egregious and repeated efforts to bring Israel before this court through the obscene exploitation of the most sacred convention. South Africa presents the court yet again for the fourth time within the scope of less than five months 
with a picture that is completely divorced from the facts and circumstances. Israel is engaged in a difficult and tragic armed conflict. South Africa ignores this factual context, which is essential in order to comprehend the situation, and also ignores the applicable legal framework of international humanitarian law. It makes a mockery of the heinous charge of genocide. In response to the Israeli delegation's successful stance versus South Africa's baseless allegations, Israeli Foreign Minister Israel Katz released a statement in which he emphasized that there is no force that can prevent Israel of its right to self-defense, while telling the leadership of South Africa, quote, repeating a lie a thousand times won't turn it into truth. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I would like to encourage you, pray for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. Moreover, if you're blessed by our productions, which are exclusively donation-based and as such broadcast free of charge, please consider making a donation. You can do so via our website at www.tv7israelnews.com. I'm Jonathan Essen, wishing you an Erev Tov Mevorach, and God willing, we'll see you during our next update. Until then, Shabbat Shalom from Jerusalem.